one, um, you're, you're just rapid fire thoughts on some of these so-called caloric restriction or fasting mimetics like resveratrol or spermidine or hydroxy citrate, things that have been shown to increase autophagy or polyphenols from, from, from coffee. Um, and maybe doing that in combination with intermittent fasting and what you, your speculation would be, but also what your um, intermittent fasting routine looks like maybe before and after your injury and if they're, you know, different and, um, and then that's it. Well, the, the answer to the last part is easy. Uh, not different. I, I eat all my food within a six hour time window and it's no simple sugars, hard, you know, virtually no saturated fat, plant, mostly plant-based, uh, nuts, vegetables, some fruits, fish. I do eat whole grains. I'm, I'm not so convinced that you know, whole wheat is bad for you. I don't think I have any gluten. Okay, then. Um, do you do prolonged fast ever, or, or a longer, longer than a daily time? Yeah, um, surprisingly, I I haven't. Uh huh. And then about you know trying to mimic effects of fasting, we've worked on this a little bit um, with two deoxyglucose and with something called DNP, which is a mitochondrial uncoupling, uncoupler. Um, 2-deoxyglucose is a, 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 it's glucose that, oh, that has a, doesn't have a hydroxyl group that glucose does. That's why it's called 2-deoxyglucose. But anyway, 2-deoxyglucose will be taken up in cells just like glucose is, but it cannot be used to produce ATP. And it competes with an enzyme called hexokinase. That's like the first enzyme involved in the metabolism of, of glucose that leads to ATP production. So the bottom line is if you... If you uh, feed an animal or human, 2-deoxyglucose, cells in the animal will think, uh, they will experience the effects of glucose deprivation because there's less glucose coming in. And in fact, it will increase some of these protein chaperones, one called uh, GRP78, glucose-regulated protein 78. It's kind of like a heat shock protein. And we found that if we give 2-deoxyglucose every other day, it can be neuroprotective in some of our models, and we published that. And then with Don Ingram, no, not with Don Ingram, it was Don Ingram, he, wa he wanted to see if 2-deoxyglucose would increase lifespan. So he put it in the diet of animals and actually, it shortened their lifespan. It had some adverse effects long-term on the cardiovascular system. Um, so now that's kind of mimicking calorie restriction at a, at a kind of fundamental global way, you know, way upstream. And the things you mentioned are, you know, can you activate pathways, like certain pathways autophagy, um, and others that are maybe kind of downstream. And I, I don't know. I'm, I think the thing is, it's kind of tricky business, um, knowing how to know what amount of any thing that mimics fasting is enough. Uh, for example, you may see some short-term benefit in, in whatever endpoint you're looking at. Um, so, for example, ketones. The 2-deoxyglucose the will increase ketone levels because the cells uh, think there's less glucose in the blood when there's actually not, and so ketones are produced. Um, but, you know, long-term, it's not good. So, you know, I, I, I'm kind of, I, 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 my advice is to stick with exercise. I think intermittent fasting 
can be helpful for a lot of people uh, at keeping your mind intellectually engaged, eating good diet. Um, there's just not sufficient data to support the use of any of these things, you know, whether it's um, nicotinamide, riboside, or, you know, rapamycin seems like it's something that in animal studies looks pretty interesting, but I'd be kind of hesitant to take rapamycin myself, um, just given that, you know, what it's prescribed for is suppressing the immune system and and long-term in humans, we don't know. Um, so.